Uh, Andy touched on a few things about uh, professionalism lacking. You know, it was, it was such a new industry. A, a lot of these people were not from the traditional uh, forestry world. Um, and uh, and Deb, I'm ready for the PowerPoint whenever whenever you can get it up. Um, uh, there was not a lot of continuity. There there wasn't a lot of standardization. There wasn't a lot of education in in the urban wood industry um, because a lot of the woods that we were working with uh, behave differently than than some of the woods in the traditional wood world, and. Um, and we needed some, uh, and not only that, we also did not have a great idea as as new people to the urban wood world of how to how to process uh, process dry sterilize and all of those sorts of things. And I say we some people did, some people came from different backgrounds, but but as a whole, there wasn't enough information out there. Um, it was entering a new industry without without all the tools that you needed to do it. And, and so after, you know, a lot of talks, a lot of discussion, it was, it was understood that we didn't even have common nomenclature for what urban wood was specifically. And we were, we were all over the place with that. And so we knew we needed, we, we knew we had some work to do. Um, and we, we knew we needed some tools in place. And so we began to write uh, standards for urban wood and their USRW certified urban wood. Uh, we're ready for the next slide, please, Deb. And, um, and we knew that if we were going to rescue more urban wood, we were going to need to sell more urban wood. So we needed more tools in place. We needed infrastructure in place. We needed training in place. And so we began to write the standards. And meanwhile, while all of this is happening, different groups around the nation are also working on, simultaneously, we're working on tools uh, to to help get into the hands of urban wood professionals so they didn't have to reinvent that wheel. Uh, one that I can think of right now that's going on, and we'll learn a little more about that tomorrow, is uh, Danny Torres is has a uh, CAL FIRE grant to start working on getting drying schedules that are specifically for the urban woods that uh, that are coming out of uh, California area and and um, and then teaching that getting getting that information downloading that into urban wood professionals so that they're not having to go get a you know go to the school of hard knocks like Andy was talking about that that uh, his his company and my company's had to go through so we're, we're trying to make it easier on that next generation so that we can rescue more urban wood and next slide so USRW certified urban wood will help to legitimize the urban wood industry. Uh, next slide, and I'll give some background on this. So the, uh, we've talked a little bit, Andy touched on a little bit, it's kind of why we needed some standards. Um, but to give a little backstory, as, as I'm thinking, okay, what's the next step? We know that, uh, so, so now we've got these sawmills into the hands of, of people. We're starting to get some kilns out there. We need more kilns in place. So that's still a weak link, but we're starting to get all this training in place and get the infrastructure and the people in place. Uh, but, um, you know, and, and with the training and everything, but now we need to sell it. Now we need to market it. We need to get it out there. And so, um, I began to approach small, um, and small to mid-sized uh, wood uh, stores, um, uh, little hardware stores, lumber stores, wood stores, to see if they would be interested in taking uh, or adding an urban wood section into their store and or into their location. And and I you know I told them the great story of it. I told them the behind the scenes, um, you know that that you know the story of the tree and how it sequesters that carbon and and how great it is for the environment how great it is for small business and all of these other things and they bought it and they're going yeah we love that we would love to do that but but do you do you have any standards you know like like how do we know what we're going to get like what grades are you going to be able to give me what supply are you going to be able to give me um if if I start selling this, are, am I gonna, are you going to be able to feed that pipeline? Um, 
And, and how do I know, like, is this being sterilized first? Am I going to be protected? And, uh, you know, a lot of our customers want to see that something's been FSC certified or SFI certified, um, or they want to know how many miles this, this particular wood has traveled so that they can get it to meet certain lead score uh, qualifications. And, and so there were a lot of questions. Like, they love the idea, but we knew we had some work to do before some of them would accept it. And uh, simultaneously, we're out there, you know, several of us out trying to get architects and designers and builders and and wood specifiers to accept urban wood. And, and many of them, you know, I say many, we, we're making headway with some of them and we're super excited and a lot of us do a lot of business with those, but there are so many who just said, no, we, we, we need, you know, yeah, we can do this, but for, I'm getting direction from this, you know, higher up that it has to be certified, you know, and they're looking to these traditional certifications. Um, they, 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 they needed to follow their protocol of, of what they were used to and what they were familiar with. And um, so we knew we had some work to do. Um, and then there were some who said, yeah, we used urban wood once and we bought it from Johnny down the block and it, you know, about six months later, it starts to move on us. Uh, well, that's because Johnny hadn't been trained yet in buying urban wood. So Dan, Danny was Danny hadn't done his training yet, and uh, and uh, so that that wasn't done yet. And then you know, oh, I bought you know I bought this slab from Johnny down the block, and it it started crawling. It started moving, uh, pests coming out of it. Uh, and so that was, you know, uh, pe people didn't have the technology, didn't have the tools, and maybe didn't know that they perhaps needed to sterilize in, in uh, some of this wood. And, and so there, there were things that we needed to, to, to uh, get some consistency on. So the backstory why we needed standards, we needed uh, consistent, high quality products we needed to meet the request of those wood specifiers so that they could have confidence in urban wood that or you know that that if the urban wood bears the label of USRW certified here's what that means and and here's here's you know you can if if it has this label on it you can be assured that the, the moisture content is declared as it is that that the grade here's the urban wood grade um, uh, customer recognition through consistent brand, uh, building a brand. You know, marketing is, is is something that each of these smaller businesses. We've we've got small operators who are just doing a few thousand board feet a year, up to those that are doing hundreds of thousands of board feet a year, and everything in between. And this collectively allows them to get behind a brand, a brand that helps represent them and gives them gives them credibility and legitimacy in the industry. Um, uh, standardization, uh, standardization of processing, standardization of grade, labeling, and the product itself. It also gives transparency through traceability because there's a chain of custody. You're going to know where, uh, where the tree came from, why it was removed. Uh, you're going to be able to follow it all the way through the entire, uh, the entire process, um, you're going to be able to, through this, you're going to be able to reach larger markets. Next slide, please. Um, and, and so our, our consumers, the, the larger wood users, were very familiar with some already well-recognized, well-accepted certification programs that, that existed. And some of those certification programs were um, SFI, FSC, PEFC, and some lead requirements. So
is that um, we are now uh, working with them and talking to them about urban wood and they're starting to get excited about urban wood and both SFI and FFC are making moves towards uh, urban wood products and having those conversations with, uh, with the Urban Wood Network and USRW Certified Urban Wood. So we're very, very excited about the progress that the urban wood industry and the movement is making. And so next slide, please. So, so having, uh, having standards in chain of custody, record those miles traveled. That's very important for lead standards. Right now, what we, we have what we call uh, local wood written into the standards. And we wrote that in at a 500 mile radius because that's what lead has traditionally had. Um, we're, we're doing the standards. We're putting those out there for a one year pilot program. And during that period of time, it, it's very likely that we're going to transition and, and close that local wood gap into the 100 mile radius, which is what LEED is working towards. Um, they, they have two different standards. The, the 500 mile is far more recognized at the moment. Um, it can still be USRW certified regardless of how many miles it, it travels. But just to give the consumer one more bit of information, on where their wood's coming from and just helping them uh, uh, keep their carbon footprint as small as they possibly can. We give them that, uh, giving them that data will, will allow uh, us to do that and, and to meet, uh, to find out what woods will meet uh, which LEED certification uh, uh, program. Um, a record the reason the tree was removed. That's very important in some of the FSC standards. Um, if you are removing a tree for and converting that land to non-forest use, uh, it is currently excluded from FSC standards, although they are considering some other options within urban. Uh, right now, it is, it is excluded from that, so we record that data. That way, our consumers of urban wood can make the decision with their pocketbook on if they want to purchase wood uh, that was removed, uh, if, if it must have died first, then that's those are the types of woods that they will purchase and they'll be able to see that. And, and some will go, you know what, I know a shopping mall went in for that or a highway went in for that, but I still don't want the wood to waste. So that'll still go into the program, but the consumers will be able to track, track and see where the tree came from and purchase with their pocketbook because we found that that is... Um, that is something that was very concerning when we did market research for our consumers is that they were concerned about the commercialization of our beautiful urban forest uh, with programs like this. And so giving them that transparency allows them to feel very comfortable with, with what they're doing and what they're purchasing. Uh, consistent labeling and, and product. I talked about that before. Um, it, the USRW certified wood, uh, certification program, certified urban wood program, will not mandate that you can't sell green wood. Uh, some, some people want to sell green wood and they sell it to someone else and they deal with whatever needs to be done for their use uh, in their application. But what it does uh, state is that you have to declare it. If it's green, you must declare it. And, and what that means to your consumer, uh, or is it heat, uh, heat treated? Is it heat sterilized? Is it kiln dried? Is it air dried? So those declarations will help build consistency, confidence, trust, and legitimacy. Um, and the urban wood grading system. One of the things that, um, that when we were reaching out to, to those who would sell our wood through their stores, uh, the urban wood, was what about the grading? And of course, there's some great grading systems out there right now. And of course, anyone is welcome to use those. But for my facility and for a lot of other facilities that were processing urban wood, we found that if we got the grades, if we met certain grades that the traditional, uh, the traditional wood world uh, was, was requesting, we left so much great wood on the table and created so much waste. And so, yes, you can still use those, but we created something with the urban wood and, and the products that we're getting out of that in mind. And, um, and so that, that way we were able to uh, minimize waste and so there'll be urban mill run, there'll be urban select, urban premium, um, and, and several different other grades so that you'll be able to, uh, to sell your wood with confidence without waste. So next slide. 
And how am I doing on time, Nancy? <laughs> oh, all right. So, <laughs> so we can go ahead and, and skip this slide. Um, it's just, just kind of wrapping up what we'd already said. Um, it helps us move beyond just Live Edge, which will help us sell more urban wood, which helps us rescue more urban wood. And next slide. And handouts. Um, there are handouts in, in the um, side here. Uh, Deb, can, Deb or Stephanie, if you can text where they can find those handouts, because at a glance, I'm not seeing them. Uh, the Urban Forest Management Plan template, you can also find that on caufc.org, the California Urban Forest Council. Um, Mike Pallet is going to really take a deep dive into that uh, into that this afternoon, um, or into the results of of utilizing one of those. And as part of the standards, um, I, I want to say it's page ten of that. Uh, we've we've pulled out separately uh, and put into the USRW Certified Urban Wood Standards the Urban Wood Utilization Policy Template. We've, we've uh, worked on that. It's ever so slightly modified. That's also in the handouts. There are tree benefits in the handouts and the urban trees in the handouts. And next slide, please. I think I have one more slide. Oh, two more slides. So here's another, another shot, a sample of that policy. We'll skip through this. Um, because I talked too long before. Um, and I just want to say thanks to our sponsors. This, this uh, project of the standards was funded uh, by Proposition 68, a grant project, and provided through CAP. We definitely want to thank. If you have any questions, you can go, you can email info at urbansalvagedwoods.com or you can go to info at urbansalvagedwoods.com website, or I'm sorry, urbansalvagewoods.com website and uh, and uh, see anything else that you want to see. Thank you very much.